Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. They don't come out in so many words and say that they want to take us over. <laughs> They're too clever for that. But that's what they want. They want to take over us, individual me. And if we let them seep in here from down yonder on Cross River, if we let these do-gooders, these bleeding hearts, propagate their insidious doctrine of involvement among us, then, my dear friend, we's in trouble. Deep, deep trouble. Hey there, everybody. It's P.T. Pop on A Mind Revolution. Season 4, Episode 8. Everything you know is wrong. Yes, thank you for downloading me. Hello to all of you sexy beasts, to all of you sexy podcasting, podcast listening beasts that populate the internet. I appreciate your patronage. Again, this is P.T. Papa Mind Revolution, where I lead you out of the rabbit hole, one grain of truth at a time. And uh, for those of you that may have listened to me before, I've been on doing this for a couple of years, and I used to be on a on a website called Buzzsprout, and they were charging me like eighteen dollars a month to have a podcast. And I found another place <clears throat> called Anchor FM, and I switched over to them because they were free and they let me advertise and I make some money. So when you hear the little the little advertisements in my own voice for Anchor FM, that's me, and I make a couple of cents every time that plays. So far, I've made a whopping $4, <laughs> but it's better than nothing. It's better than me having to pay them, and I appreciate Anchors um, putting me on their platform and allowing me to pontificate. So that's that. If you've heard some of my other episodes on another, you know, I've, I've been out there. I've had, a, I have like a, I don't know, I had like 80 episodes on Buzzsprout, and I had about 5,000 downloads and I really wanted to do something where I wasn't paying a monthly fee for it, so I switched. So some of my episodes are gone. Some of them I have republished. Some of them I saved here on my hard drives here at home. Others I just got rid of. And uh, so I'm just here today, and, and I wanted to talk with you. My my um, topic today is everything you know is wrong. But before I get to the main topic, let me tell you about a documentary I wrote and produced and directed. It's called The Artist, a documentary. And this is a documentary that I filmed in the thriving art community of Dayton, Ohio. And it explores the life of an artist through conversations with people passionate about what it means to be an artist, the challenges they face as artists in, in this digital age, and the importance and the support of the art community. And I made this documentary because I've been an artist almost my whole life. And I'm a painter, a photographer, a filmmaker, I'm a songwriter and a writer. And it's a very, very hard road to hoe. It's very hard to be an artist. And it's not something that's for the faint of heart. We're all just not running around in um, tall fields of daisies chasing butterflies with nets. Though there are people chasing us with nets. And um, I think it's, it's important that the world knows what we go through as artists because art is everywhere. Art is a part of our world. And with art, there be no decorations on boxes, there'd be no movies, there'd be no books, there'd be no TV shows, there'd be no music. There be, wouldn't be anything. Would be, life would be dull and lifeless. But if you want to check out my movie, The Artist, the documentary, go to theartistadocumentary.com, and you can see the trailers there. You can rent it or purchase it for two ninety nine. So there you have it. There's some of my shameless self-promotion. If you're new to my podcast, my name is Peter Tompkins. I'm an author, director, songwriter from Cleveland, Ohio, on the north coast of America. Some call me a social justice warrior. I don't know about that. I mean, I, I, um, I, I, I think what I want to talk about today in some ways, am I a social justice warrior? I don't know, because I, I have a pretty unrealistic view of the world, I think, because 
when I was younger, I really cared about people. I really was like, you know, I wanted to get into psychology or get into customer service or do something where I could help people. And then I started trying to help people and I found out people don't really want to be helped. I found out that people, the general population of the world, most people are pretty narrow minded and pretty, they're like simpletons. It's like an ocean of simpletons. And I guess I'm real discouraged about it because I don't know if I really want to be a social justice warrior. I started this podcast because I wanted to try to open people's minds up and show them how they're being tricked every single day by corporations and by the government to spell it out for you, saying, hey, you're being manipulated here, here, and here. And I expected the general population to go, oh, really? I didn't know that. Wow. And for the most part, even the people I meet in my personal life, and I say, did you know that this, this, and this is how you're manipulated in movies and in TV and advertising? They're like, oh, okay, okay, all right. Oh, uh, excuse me, Pete, i got to go watch the last round of uh, golf on uh, NBC. And they don't care. Most people, most of us, myself included, I used to be in trance. I used to be in a trance by the media and the corporations, and I would be all upset and I'd be jealous if somebody had more likes than me on Facebook, and I'd be upset if somebody had a nicer car than me, and I'd be upset if somebody had a bigger house than me. And then I, I, something happened to me, and this is how I got to this place in my life where I started to be, quote, woke, unwoke. And I'm not talking about political woke or racially woke. I'm talking about I'm, I'm awake to all the lies that are all around us on a daily basis. I moved to Arizona because Arizona was someplace I dreamed of living because growing up here in Cleveland, it's cold, snowy, and icy for about six months out of the year. As a matter of fact, it's March 13th today, and we just got like a half an inch of snow last night. And it's 20 degrees outside, and it's cold, and I'm tired of it. It's sunny, but I'm tired of the cold. And after a while, you get tired of the cold, gray skies that entomb the city. There's no escaping it, and you're kind of stuck here unless you can move away. So I moved to Arizona, and it was a dream of mine. I had been there a few times. I love the landscape. I love the climate. Anything to get away from the snow and the ugly fat people with the Marlboro Reds stuck in their pie hole. So I moved out there where all the people were beautiful and skinny and glamorous, and I was miserable. There's no seasons. There's no change of seasons out there. There's no weather. It's all just sunny all the time, every day of the year, 365 days a year. They get three inches of rain, and that's it. Here in Cleveland, you get like 30 inches of rain a year. Um, there's nothing out there. And the people that I met, not all of them, but a lot of the people I met or people you run into in the street or on the roads were just complete assholes. And I, I became very disillusioned with my dreams, and I became very disillusioned with how Arizona was promoted to me when I researched going out there. Everybody sent me these glossy brochures. Now, this is 20 years ago when I moved out there. Everybody from the town, I was going to move to a town called Gilbert, and then I was going to move to a town called Chandler. And every city council or every um, chamber of commerce mailed me their little gl glossy trifold folder, and it depicted as sunny and happy and new houses and nice people and everybody's having a good time. They're just out golfing and playing tennis. And, hey, yeah, I'm just having fun in Arizona. Well, I got out there and people were golfing and playing tennis. But I don't know, man. I After about a year and a half, two years, my wife and I, we despised it. We had We had a little backyard. We had this little tiny backyard with cinder block walls that were like seven feet high. And anytime you went in the backyard to relax or have a beer, it was like sitting in a prison yard. And it couldn't take it. And the people in the street, everybody, every time you went driving anywhere, doesn't matter where you went, you were tailgated by people, constantly tailgated. And if the freeway, most of the freeways out there are 75 miles an hour. If you were doing 85 to 90, it still wasn't fast enough. There'd still be somebody, some asshole tailgating you. And people were rude in the grocery stores and all the public places you went. People were just not friendly. They were good looking. They were nice to look at. And I just became very disillusioned. And one day I was out there and I found out, you know, this is several years after 9-11. I found out about a movie called Loose Change where the guy questioned what really happened on September 11th, 2001 when our World Trade Centers were attacked. 
And I don't think he came right, came right out and said it, but I realized at that very moment that everything I know is, is wrong. I realized that our government lied to us on that day. And I realized that they did it for nefarious reasons, probably to get their military into Afghanistan, to get into the lithium mines over there so we could have some type, type of dominance over the lithium mines and who knows why we're in Iraq. I mean, I've heard all kinds of, you know, ideas behind it. But as I sit back and I and I, I think to myself, well, you know, you can lead people. You know the saying, you can you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. We can lead a person to their brain, but you can't make them think. You know, you can you can show people the truth, but you can't make them believe it. And I see it all around me. I mean, see, when I was in school, when I was in junior high school and high school, I was a quiet guy. I was real quiet. I was afraid of my own shadow. I was very timid. I was very like a reflective person, very quiet, conservative looking guy. But I I wouldn't. I didn't want to be bothered by anyone, and I didn't want to bother anyone. But I sat up against my locker before class, before homeroom, and I would sit back and watch everybody. And back then, I remember watching all the people that were the burnouts or the druggies and the kids with the Led Zeppelin concert T-shirts or the, you know, Death Death Leopard or Iron Maiden T-shirts and just sit in judgment of them and go, you know, they're all idiots. They're all buying into something that's this total bullshit. And I was sitting in judgment of them all. In a very unchristian like way, though I wasn't Christian at the time. But I've always been kind of like this. It's always been part of my chemistry, my makeup. And the recent thing that the recent thing that's really getting me going is like on September eleventh, the world watched three buildings turn to dust before our very eyes. Three buildings. The two twin towers and building seven. Now, many people don't know about Building 7, but it was imploded. It was blown up and leveled by uh, explosives on that day, though they say it was from, from fires. Three buildings, literally steel and concrete, both turned to dust and molten steel. Steel melted. And the world saw it, and it's been explained to them that it was a farce, and nobody wants to believe it. Nobody will believe it. And, and I think it's a couple of things I think of people are afraid to believe it. I think it's too painful. I think it, it'd be the equivalent of like if you found out your father was a crook or your father was a child molester and you didn't know it, you know, and then you find out, oh, my God, my dad was a, he was diddling kids, and and you don't want to believe it. You, you go into this denial. You go into all kinds of a psychological earthquake happens in your brain, and I think when you find out your government is crooked, when you find out that your government is lying, when you find out your government Mis, mis lied to the world and thousands of people died you have a tendency to go oh my god I can't handle it. I just can't handle it man I can't handle it and you freak out and you don't want to deal with it and you bury your head in the sand and so this this leads me to, to today's topic which is as I said at the beginning everything you know is wrong and I've mentioned this in previous podcasts. I mean, can you imagine if it, it's more than apparent? There's something other than what was told to us the day John F. Kennedy, President Kennedy, was assassinated happened. It's more than apparent that somebody from inside rerouted his, you know, his his cars, the motorcade, and had him shot in probably a triangulation of fire. It's more than obvious that it wasn't just some schmuck named Oswald sitting in a building with, with a cheap Italian rifle. It's more than apparent. It's more than apparent that 9-11 isn't, the true story isn't really what happened. A bunch of guys, terrorists, jumped on planes, hijacked and flew in the buildings, collapsed the buildings. They, they just happened to get so lucky that on the day that they happened to be able to fly jumbo jets they had never flown before, perfectly fly them at 600 miles an hour at sea level into, into two buildings and get lucky enough to knock both of them down. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like, really? And, and when you start to see that things aren't really, really what you think they are, it makes you question everything. 
you know, well, how did Princess Diana die? I mean, these are all considered, quote, conspiracy theories, unquote. But seriously, most of the things that they're feeding us are lies. And they feed them to us, but they don't feed them to us. They, they tantalize us, and they tease us, and they seduce us through Hollywood-type Hollywood type productions. It's, it's my claim that 9-11 was one of the greatest Hollywood productions, or the greatest Hollywood production of all time. Not great as in good, great as in the amount of work they must have put into that to get those buildings to go down. And and if you look at all of it, I mean, if you think of my one of my one of my podcasts where I cover the book Chaos and CIA and Charles Manson, it's not the exact title, but but if, CIA, if the CIA had something to do with undermining the hippie movement by putting Charles Manson in there to make the population of America and the world afraid of hippies, you know the CIA is well known to have been into the Haight Ashbury district, giving people drugs and getting them hooked on acid and heroin and stuff. I mean, nothing you know is is nothing we know is is the way it was portrayed. Everything we know is wrong. There's a book by a a gentleman by the name of Brian Tui called The Fix is In. And this is a book where he talks about how the NFL is rigged. And I've had this feeling in my stomach, this, this gut feeling that the NFL is just complete horseshit especially with this last Super Bowl with the Rams and the Vikings. Now, I am from Ohio, and I'm a Cleveland Browns fan for some reason still. And here in Cleveland, we're like, for some reason, we're like diehard Cleveland Browns fans, and we hate the Bengals. Now, we hate the Bengals because there was a guy named Paul Brown who was like the father of modern football, and he was the coach of the Cleveland Browns, and I think he started the Browns back in the 40s, like in 1946. And he and the owner uh, of the Browns got into a fight like in 1964 or three or something like that. And Paul Brown left Cleveland. And a few years later, he was in Cincinnati. He started his own team called the Bengals. More than you ever needed to know. But so I, I knew in my heart that they would not let the Bengals win a Super Bowl. The Bengals have now been at the Super Bowl, I think, three times. And they've never won it. But I knew they wouldn't win it. Not because they're not good enough. They They... They're not a big enough team. They're not a big enough name. They don't pull enough revenue in for the NFL because they're in a smaller market. They don't pull the advertising dollars. There's not any big names on the team really other than Joe Burrow. Um, and I can't think of their – they have a, a great receiver and a running back. I can't remember their names. But I just didn't think whoever, quote, they, unquote, are would let the Bengals win, and I was right. You're never going to win when you're a Bengal or a Brown. It doesn't matter if Cleveland and Cincinnati have been marked to, you know, always be the losers in those two leagues. Or well, we're we're in the, the we're in the AFC. Between the AFC and NFC, us, the Bengals, the Browns, the Bengals, and the Bills will never win a Super Bowl. They might let the Browns go, but they will not let us win it. And it, and if you look at things. There's so many weird things that just don't make any sense. Like, I've seen these, quote, conspiracy theories, unquote, about Paul McCartney being dead, like he died in 1966. And for a long time, I was like, that's bullshit. There's no way. There's no, I mean, my first thought was, okay, this band got so lucky that they got famous, number one, because they're they're really, they're sucky musicians. The Beatles, back when they got discovered in, in the cavern, and in the Star Club, they were they they really sucked as tactical musicians, but they had this energy and this charisma that came through in their performances. What what caught the well allegedly what caught the eye of Brian Epstein, their manager. I have another theory of that, especially Brian Epstein, who was um, oh a little bit different. I think he was more interested in John Lennon and him in his tight leather pants, but it's a whole other story. But then, you know, I, I started looking at pictures of Paul McCartney. And I remember when I was a little kid, I saw this picture of Paul McCartney in the mid-1970s in the newspaper here in, here in Cleveland. There was a paper called the Cleveland Press. And I'm looking at it, and there's a picture of Paul McCartney being mobbed by fans in, like, 1975. And it was just a little article in the entertainment section of the Cleveland Press. And I said, that's not Paul McCartney. 
And my mom's like, yeah, that's Paul McCartney. The article says it's Paul McCartney. And to this day, I used to, I used to have the picture and I threw it away many years ago, but this was not the same Paul McCartney I grew up looking at as a kid. And I thought, well, that's weird. It doesn't look like him. Not at the time. I'm like nine or 10 years old. And I thought that's weird. And I've recently gone through and I'm going to do a video of this. I've done comparisons of his face between 1966 and say 1967, eight, nine. And his face is different. Now, is it a different guy or did Paul McCartney have plastic surgery? His chin is different. His eyes are different. His nose is different. His teeth are different. Did Paul McCartney have a twin brother? I mean, it sounds like Paul, but if you look at everything that happened after 1966, everything changed in the Beatles. Their music, everything changed. Their music completely changed. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, if you want to believe the regular story. But I think for a band that got that lucky to get that famous for mediocre musicians who really hit it big and like like became world sensations, they'd have to get even equally or more lucky to find a lookalike that looks just like Paul McCartney <laughs> and step in and take his place and also be left-handed and also be able to sing like him. So, But if everything we know is a lie... Everything you know is wrong. It's just, it's mind-blowing. And as I said, you can lead people to the truth, but you can't make them believe it. I mean, you can lead people to their brains, but you can't show them how to think. I mean, the average person is a simpleton. They're, they're easily led around by the latest trends, by the media. And if you're a man, you're led around by your John Thomas, by your... Uh, by your trouser snake. I mean, how many men have been demised by deceitful women that are just sexy rulers and kings and spies and things like that? I mean, if you're a man, they, they've got you hooked on porn at a very young age in this country. And it's the undermining of all, all sexuality in this world. So, I wanted to play, what I wanted to do... All of a sudden, this is this is what leads me to this today. Is that two years ago, it was announced worldwide that there was a pandemic. And that we should all be very, very scared. There's a pandemic and you're going to die from it. Your mother's going to die. Your father's going to die. Your grandfather, your children, even your dogs can get it. And if you don't hide in your house... Socially distanced and wear a mask. You're going to die. You're going to die. All of you are going to die. And I sat back and I, this is when I first started my podcast. And I said, this is all bullshit. I said it back then and some of those shows are gone. But this is all bullshit. And nobody was getting sick. And so like eight months into the pandemic, I took a drive around all the hospitals and I drove around. They had all these little external check-in areas that were like covered in tarps where people could come in. They could bring the dead. They could bring the, the dying. They could bring the sick. And everyone I went to was completely empty. There was no one around. I walked into the emergency rooms. I had a friend that was in the hospital at the time. I visited her in the emergency room. Then I had a friend that actually had COVID and was in an emergency room. And there was no one else around. It wasn't like there was a, uh, they were piled up bodies in the hallways and people crying and there was nothing going on. I thought, well, this is weird. And I thought, oh, this is weird. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm kind of right. And it got worse and worse and worse. And, they, and, and, and every time they brought up the numbers, the numbers came down to about a one, less than a 1% fatality rate. And then they kept putting, every night in the news, the pandemic, COVID-19 is going to get you. There's 9 million people dead worldwide. Okay. <clears throat> I still have only known maybe two or three people that allegedly have gotten it. Now, uh, two years later, two years later, they're saying it's over. It's an endemic. And I'm like, what? It's an endemic? How did it get to become an endemic? Here I'm gonna I'm gonna play a video here from YouTube. 
The difference between an endemic and a pandemic. On Friday, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention relaxed mask guidance for most people where hospitalizations and COVID cases are low to moderate. That has left many people now wondering what's next. A public health professor says the next step is to wait, watch, and see if a new surge happens. Dr. Wait and watch and see if a new surge happens? You, you got to be kidding me, right? I mean, that he really just said that. Let's listen to that again. On Friday, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention relaxed mask guidance for most people where hospitalizations and COVID cases are low to moderate. That has left many people now wondering what's next. A public health professor says the next step is to wait, watch, and see if a new surge happens. <laughs> wait and watch if a new surge happens. Now, this is from February 26, 2022. Dr. Richard Rothenberg says a disease can be considered an epidemic, pandemic, or endemic. See, okay, so now they're trying to now they're trying to lessen it. It can be a, it can be an epidemic, a pandemic, or an endemic. So really, all the demics are kind of the same. It's kind of like you still should be very scared. Be very, very, very scared. Come on, man. Cases a pandemic means a disease is on every continent and has established itself everywhere. And an endemic means there's a low level of acceptable disease. Now it's an endemic. Now they've announced this. You all know this. They've announced that it's moving from a pandemic to an endemic, meaning it's, you know, there's not very many occurrences of the disease. All of a, Just all of a sudden. Just as the endemic start, the endemic wasn't even announced yet. This is what happened. Across Ukraine, the sounds of war, the dead are already being counted. The living are speaking to the world. My world is collapsed. We are basically very scared. Nobody deserves this. Russia's president has long signaled this attack built on lies. The intention of the repeated propaganda on television is to justify the war. As Ukraine bears the brunt, Europe is on edge. This hideous and barbaric venture of Vladimir... Oh, there's Boris Johnson. Oh, my God. Somebody get that man a comb, please. Putin must end in failure. Tough talk from leaders. But what will they do? Is it enough? We're imposing further severe sanctions. Oh, thank you. Thank you for those severe sanctions. So, so Uncle Pooty gets a bug up his body. He's been playing this for a while, and he decides to invade Ukraine to reestablish, in my opinion, he's reestablishing the Soviet Union because he's nostalgic. He's a nostalgic fella. He's a very emotional guy. He's, he's very emotional. He's very uh, very into the olden days. <laughs> and uh, so he invades, and then all of a sudden, just out of the blue, we've got an endemic. Oh, wow, really? Oh, I wonder how that happened. We just went from having billions of people, or billions, millions of people dying, cases everywhere, and then they say this. This is, this is from March 3rd, just a few days later. Saying Americans will need to learn to live with the virus. This morning, authorities believe our nation is transitioning from pandemic to endemic. What the fuck? From, I mean, I've got to ask you, I, I don't have a big audience, okay? There's about 25 of you that download me. But just ask your friends, are, are, and those of you that really believed in all this COVID stuff, just go up and say, are you really an idiot? Are you as dumb as you look? Certainly, you know, they'll say, certainly. I mean, it's really getting to be... It's, it's getting to be re- goddamn ridiculous. All of us and just Uncle Pooty invades and whoosh, it's gone. The pandemic's over, everybody. Come on out of your houses, take off your mask, and let's have a party. Hey! Holding their first briefing together in person in more than a year, the White House COVID Task Force... The White House COVID Task Force. Look at these buffoons. Fauci, I mean, I can't stand this guy, Fauci. I can't stand his face, his voice, the way he dresses. I don't know who the other three schmucks are. But you can't see this, but they're sitting at uh, four desks. There's a woman and three men, one of, one of them being Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci. And they've got the big blue and white uh, screens behind them saying, COVID-19 response, COVID-19 response, press briefing, you know, with a draped... Framed by the American flag, which is which is just a bunch of. 
is outlining a new 96-page plan to move forward. A 96-page plan. Now, where do they come up with a 96-page plan between the time Uncle Pooty invaded on February 22nd and March 3rd? That's some pretty good writing. If you looked at the practical... Oh, here's Dr. Fauci. Hello, Dr. Fauci. You're my hero. Oh, you saved the world, you, you, you beast of a man, you ho. ...reality of where we are. We are clearly going in the right direction. Hoping Americans feel safe returning to the office and filling downtown streets again, the COVID plan calls for four main goals. Still focused on vaccines, there'll be more genomic sequencing for variants. More genomic sequencing for variants. Now, I know the average person doesn't even know what what coffee to order at Starbucks. Are they really going to understand what... I say, uh, could you give me a double latte, cafe, mocha, and uh, uh, can you tell me more about these genomic sequence things for variants there, uh, barista lady? Why, certainly, my friend. Well, genomic sequencing is this. Nobody knows. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> what does that mean? And in an effort to prevent shutdowns, next week, Americans can order additional free at-home testing kits. Oh, yay, we got free home testing, yay, 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 yay. Are you crazy? Yes, I'm certifiable, thank you. It's, and if someone tests positive at a pharmacy or... If someone tests positive, you can have them shut. ...clinic, antiviral medications could be available on the spot. Now, all of a sudden, just all, all of a sudden, people, in two years... They've got viral medications on the spot. Boom. They've been working on this. Bill Gates and Dr. Fauci. Hello, I'm Dr. Fauci. All of these efforts are with... This is Dr. Rochelle Walensky, CDC director. She's wearing bright yellow. <sighs> and, and yellow is a very, a very um, eye-catching color. I'm not going to go into the psychology of color in this one, but... There's a reason why she's wearing yellow. The vision for not just COVID, but also to address any future infectious and non-infectious public health threats. Efforts are with a vision. Let's listen All to that. All of these efforts are with a vision. All of these efforts. For not just COVID. Are not just for COVID. But also to address any future infectious. But to address any future infectious. And non-infectious. And non-infectious. Just public health threats. Public health threats. Hmm. With a plan in place for it. A plan in place. Uh, this is such propaganda bullshit. It is such crap. A new normal. Some believe we could as early as this summer face a new variant and another surge. How do they know that? How do they know that? How do they come up with all these medications all of a sudden? And they know by this summer. You must be very scared by this summer. Especially when you're all traveling and the gas prices are through the roof and there's war in Europe. Oh, there'll be a variant that will scare you. You'll all have to hide in your houses with your obnoxious spouses and their dog and the screaming children. <laughs> be very scared. Be very scared. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? But today the country is on solid footing. Oh, now we're on solid footing. We went from total chaos in this country with people shooting themselves and overdosing on heroin because they couldn't handle the, the pandemic and being locked in their houses. To, oh, now we're not. I say, Jake, we're now on solid footing. Everybody go outside and have a, have a, have a good stiff walk around the, around the neighborhood and a good drink. Have a drink on me. I think it's up to us. Oh, this is Dr. Stephen Phillips. He's the COVID Collaborative Science and Strategy Vice President. Oh, look at his hair. Him and Boris. I think him and Boris Johnson are related. Really restore our prior lives. You know? We're really going to restore our prior lives. Here's the funny part. My life didn't get altered at all. In two years, I, we traveled to Wyoming, to Florida, to North Carolina. I made a documentary. I was out having the life I always have. Boring as it may be, I still was living my life, and I'm still here to talk about it today. It's full dimension, and essentially that means not, <sighs> not fearing, for most of us, not fearing infection. 
on oh. solid footing. I'm not fearing a, infection. Uh, what does he say again? It's to really restore. Really? Hell, he's on you. I say Thurston, are we really restoring sanity to the American people? Yes. For our prior lives. Oh, the prior lives. Yes. Love it. Love it. We can go out to the concrete, the cement pond, and have a dip. Take a dip in the cement pond. Yes. It's full dimension, and essentially that means not fearing, for most of us, not fearing infection. Oh, no, 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 they're, they're worried about us fearing, and fearing infection. It's not, not really possible now that 65% of the Americans are vaccinated with the nasty, wasty woo-woo. Yes. On a better road, the path forward is still divided. Florida's governor admonishing high school students before. Oh, Jesus. Florida's governor admonishing high school students. It's all such crap. This morning, pandemic frustration and exhaustion. The one thing most Americans can agree on. As for masks on airplane, buses, and trains, the task force says... So the basic idea is Uncle Pooty scared the shit out of everybody because there's about to be World War Three, and they said we better we better stop this fake pandemic and call it an endemic because now all of our resources are going to be focused on blowing up a bunch of Ruskies in in the in the terrain of Ukraine. Ha 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 ha! We must kill Ruskies now. I just don't get it, man. I don't get it, and I guess what really blows my mind, it just, it just, I just, I just beat my head like against the wall. I'm like, what? No, everybody believes this shit. You all believe it. I don't know if the people listen to this. Nobody listens to me, but you all sit there and listen to Joe Biden. Uh, come on, man. I'm Joe Biden. Come on, man. I, I just don't understand how you could watch this and, and see these. Obviously, highly produced, highly polished, highly choreographed news stories. It's okay, everybody. You can go out and have a summer now, but there might be another one. They got to keep that fear. There might be a bigger one this summer, and you all might, your eyes might melt out of your heads, and you'll die right in the streets. And then don't forget, Uncle Pooty might be bombing us with nukes. I mean, when in doubt in this country, I don't know about what it's like in England or France or anywhere else, but here in the U.S., they want to scare the American people. They, they, they say, the Russians, the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. The Russians, the Russians are coming, my friends. They're coming to a theater near you. Look, I don't know what's going to happen in Ukraine, and I don't know what's going to happen in Russia or any place, but <laughs> nobody, nobody thinks it's kind of odd that Uncle Pudi invades Russia. And pandemic poof, it is gone. Have some potato juice and uh, click your heels, it is gone. Yes. I don't, uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't get how, how most of you don't go, oh, this was all bullshit. It was a bullshit. Uh, nobody gets it. How you can't get it, I just don't know. Listen, you guys, we've just got to get organized. For God's sake, we've got to get organized. You know? <laughs> You've got to get organized. You, you've got to get your shit together, people. Each and every one of us in every country around the world, we're all fucked with by our governments. They fuck with us. They, they mess with our heads every chance they get. And if you don't think it's true, then, then fucking go live your life with a needle in your arm and a bottle down your throat and li- sleeping in the gutter. Because you you really don't deserve any more than that. If you're that stupid that you believe that your government really cares for you, they care for you. Oh my God, my my government cares so much that they locked us up in our houses. And they took away my freedom. And they took away everything, and now gas prices are six dollars a gallon because of Uncle Pooty. There's no other reason. It's just because of the Russians. It's always the Russians' fault. In this country, it's always the Russians' fault. When Trump, Donald Trump won the election here, President Trump won the election, it was the Russians' fault. And now it's the Russians' fault the gas prices are going up. And the Russians scared. I guess I guess the, the virus got scared of Uncle Pooty. They went, oh, my God, it is, it is Uncle Pooty. He's got his army on the roll. And he, I, we must go hide. We must go hide. We must no longer infect humans because Uncle Pooty will bomb us with nukes. Yes. Yes, that's what he'll do. 
Oh my god. You're tearing me apart. It is it's tearing me apart too, man. You know, it's it's like they've they've turned life into a reality TV show. Don't laugh! This ain't reality TV! And they know, they know, they know that you and you and you and you and everybody out there watches TV and you see movies and they know, they just know that you're going to be influenced by it. And a lot of us live in a fantasy world. We live in these little superficial worlds that we're like, oh, wow, we're going to, we're going to get a good job and we're going to make lots of money. And uh, because I saw somebody in a movie do it. Yeah. And we're going to get a beautiful wife and a great looking husband and a dog and 2.5 kids because I saw Tom Hanks do it in a movie. And, uh, oh, oh and, and, uh, Lester Holt on NBC News said to be very scared. I must be very scared because he said so. Oh, he must be very afraid of the Russians too. Constant. We're con- Ever, I'm 56 years old, and they have been forcing the fucking Russians down my throat since I was in utero. As long as I can remember, fight communism, fight the Russians. It was, you know, my, I remember my dad and I sitting in the yard looking up at the sky, seeing the jet contrails, and him telling me these are probably bombers that 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 go around the world and protect us from the Russians, and that there were these Nike missile sites on the on the shore of Lake Erie, east of Cleveland, <clears throat> where they would uh, prepare for Russian bombers coming over the horizon, uh, coming over Canada to bomb us. I'll never forget that. I'm saying it's always the Russians. The Russians are to be very afraid, but if you're not afraid of the Russians. You might have a microscopic virus that will infiltrate your body and kill you and your dog. <laughs> you know, um, I don't get it. And they manipulate us every chance they get. They manipulate us in movies. TV shows, advertisements, marketing, anything, everything and anything that is created by the media or a corporation is bullshit. Everything is. Every every single thing. Think of all the things we desire to buy with you and we can't live without because some sweet young thing in a tight leather skirt on TV told us, you need this right now. And especially if you're a guy and you see a good looking girl. Oh, man, look at that hot chick. I'm going to go buy that now because that hot chick told me to. You might not consciously think that, but subconsciously they know that us men are idiots for good-looking women in tight skirts. And we'll go buy a car because some they've got an advertisement here in Cleveland for a local dealership. This really <sighs> haggard-looking woman, blonde, but she's blonde. She's got this maroon, this tight maroon leather skirt on. And she tells everybody to go out and buy a car at Schmooky Schmooky's, you know, dealership. And she's so annoying. And she's so annoying. But I know there's guys right there who sit there and go, oh, you know what? That girl's hot looking. I'm, I bet you I can go meet her at the dealership. I bet you she's down there roaming around the new cars and we can get a date from her and a new car. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's that simple. People are that stupid. It really is. And I just I just don't know, man. I, I nobody nobody sees how sneaky and conniving everybody is in the government and the corporations. And and they're in they're in bed with each other. They're out to control us because if they can control us, they can sell more products, and if they sell more products, they make more money, if they make more money. The, the men, predominantly men that run these corporations, get bigger yachts and they have more leather mistresses on the side and they have more drugs and they have more houses. And they're all a bunch of. You're fucking sneaky, Basti. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just want to say this because I just don't understand how nobody can see that all, all of a sudden the, 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 the pandemic is gone. Yahoo, Yahoo, it's gone. Yay. Oh, it's so exciting. Yay. Oh, I'm so glad I'm going to start with a mask on now. And, um, you know, I know a lot of you will say, well, Pete, why don't you have some respect for your government? Why don't you have some respect for the media, this you know. Don't you have any respect for anybody else? Respect? Yes, I've got respect for my ass. That's what I got respect for. It's all anybody respects. Respect my ass. 
And <laughs> I know I have zero respect for any branch of the government. I don't care if it's Democrat or Republican or Independent or whatever party it happens to be. I don't believe in politic- politics or politicians. I don't believe in any of that stuff. I tell people that, like, well, you, you have to believe in something. I just believe in us. That's all we have, you know, you and me. Look around you. The, the, the truth is standing right in front of you. It's not on a TV screen. It's not on an Internet Google search. It's not in some tabloid. The, the truth is not in Yahoo News. That's all tabloid bullshit. The truth does not come out of Lester Holt's mouth. It doesn't come out of President Trump or Barack Obama or or uh, 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 Joe, Joe, Joe Biden. You know, I just wish things were different. I wish I could make people see things. But as I said, you can't make people think. You know, I can wish all day. Well, you can wish in one hand and crap in the other and see which gets filled first. This is what we have right now. This isn't the Russians. This is corporate America. This is the governments around the world. They're marching to take over your mind, and they've already done it. They've got you scared of COVID. They've got you scared of the Russians. They've got you scared of chemical. They're talking about the chemical warfare the Russians might bring to the Ukrainians. As if there's anything any of us could do about it. I can't do anything about Ukraine. I'm not about to pick up a rifle and go fight in Ukraine. Hell no. I'm not doing it. I feel very bad for them because they're getting fucked right up the ass. Well, that's all there is, man. I'm P.T. Bob. All we have is each other. That's it. That's all we got is each other. And until we realize that and stop watching the news, turn off your TV. Stop looking at Yahoo News. Stop looking at Facebook and Meta. Stop it. Stop looking at all of it. Because they're going to be marching into your room just like hearing boots marching to your house and you got these things on they're just fucking with you they're fucking with you every chance they get because they they think and they know they've proven we're all a bunch of idiots go buy a I'll go buy a pet rock sure and then I'll buy myself a shiny iPhone and then I'll buy myself a, an LP player the record player because I, I don't have any LPs but I'll buy one because somebody said it was fun to have one and then I'll go buy myself a car that I can't afford, and I'll buy a house I can't afford, and then I'll lose my job, and I'll be out in the street. And they, they know that. They know we're all just like that. They know it. <laughs> We've proven it. Let's prove them wrong. Go out and help some people in your neighborhood. Go cut your neighbor's grass or shovel their snow or help a lady cross the street. Do something good. Stop listening. Turn off your radios. Turn off your internet. Log out of Facebook. Turn off of Twitter. Get off of Instagram. Divorce yourself from all of that, and you will find peace. And who am I? I'm no one. I'm not a doctor or psychologist, but I guarantee you, if you stop listening to these idiots that are trying to control your mind and manipulate you, you will find peace. And I, I don't know how else to put it, but I'm P.T. Pop, and this is a mind revolution. And I'm trying to lead you out of the rabbit hole one grain of truth at a time. I hope, I hope you all have a good day. And you enjoy what's left of your Sunday if you hear this today. Otherwise, have a good day.